realm was the realization of being home on the holidays, which doesn't hit you until you're actually home alone for the holidays. Um, Christmas is very tough, especially if you have children. And the realization of sharing your pride and joys with someone else, someone that you've shared your life with, by the way, for many years, is, it was really tough. So along this journey of divorce and being single and rediscovering who I am and self-love and all of that, I have also had to learn to be lonely and be okay with lonely. That doesn't mean that I don't get lonely, but it's fewer and further between. It's... Um, not as common as it was in the beginning and it's just one of those feelings and one of those many milestones stepping stones I guess that you don't really think about when you're entering the single world because most of the time our minds are so focused on I've got to get out of this bad situation. Not that it's it wasn't the right move because it absolutely was the right move for me. And I've never looked back uh, on the fact that I needed to get divorced or uh, needed to end the cycle that we were both in at the time. That has never been a struggle for me. And I'm sure probably not a lot of singles experience that part. The part that's really hard is you go from every day being with someone, and in my case, super codependent, to being completely alone. So I've been in this for 10 years now. Uh, my divorce was final back in 2013, September 2013. And it's crazy because I didn't know what to expect, but obviously I had these hopes, wishes, dreams, expectations that were completely unreal and were not in the cards for me. Um, that was a realization that I have now come to discover is I honestly didn't think I would be where I'm at today and be okay with it. Uh, in my mind, it was, how do I say it without putting him down? <laughs> in my mind, it was, okay, I'm leaving a bad situation for a better one, which I was, but coming from the culture that I grew up in and the expectation with society, which is so tough, um, I can't express enough how the societal beliefs, especially where I grew up, and the pressure that is put on us to uh, be married and have the perfect little white picket fence family and life, right? It is, it's really tough being in that and knowing that you don't meet their expectations. Now, just a little opinion and advice from me, the only expectations you should ever meet are your own, and that's within, that's on yourself, and that's strictly it. Uh, we, I've learned in life that we shouldn't have expectations of, obviously others, but we do it. We shouldn't have expectation, expectations, I can't speak today, of where our life should be, um, because we just never know. And I have learned that Oh, and I learned the hard way. I am one of those. Man, I will make so many mistakes and admit it before I finally get up after having my butt kicked and think, okay, I've learned, I'm done now. <laughs> uh, but I've learned all of this the hard way and that's just by being disappointed. And the only way you're disappointed in life is if you have unrealistic expectations or expectations at all, really. I, the only expectations I have from others are respect. 
um, and common courtesy, right? Which so many things fall under those umbrellas, but um, I've learned to only have those expectations. And the only expectation I have of myself is to be a good human, which means reciprocating that respect. Uh, so back to expectations, you know, I thought, I didn't think about Christmases alone. I didn't think about who's gonna be my New Year's Eve date. I didn't think about sharing my boys on the holidays. Uh, I didn't think about any of the real tough stepping stones, milestones, whatever you wanna call it, that come along with being single. And there's one side of you that you are so free from the life that you previously lived and it feels so peaceful. You feel peaceful and that part is better. But then you enter this other realm, I guess, of holy cow, this is different. I married for 15 years and now I have to share, not to share with someone in my household, but I have to tell my boys goodbye on Christmas. And I have to show up at family parties alone and have to get used to this. Uh, that's hard, that's hard. And I stopped going to family parties even because it broke my heart that I wasn't whole anymore. In my mind, I wasn't whole anymore and I didn't fit in. Uh, all of my siblings are married. They have been for a long period of time. Um, I'm the only one that's been divorced. I am the only one that has all of her children grown. And so they were all older at the time. Um, I have a little bit more of a wild lifestyle than my brothers. And nothing wrong with it, but it to me at the time, I was so insecure and so codependent that I was not happy with who I was and just stopped living uh, the family life. So I stopped going to family parties. I stopped engaging in holiday festivities and would sit there and spend Christmas Day, Christmas night, Christmas Eve um, alone. I actually remember a couple Christmases where my kids were with their dad and the only restaurant open was McDonald's in my area. So I woke up on Christmas morning alone. My kids would come over for breakfast and I would go to McDonald's, which I can't. I don't like fast food. And I would go alone. And I would sit there alone and no one knew. I didn't tell anyone that I was actually spending the day alone. I didn't reach out to anyone other than to say Merry Christmas. Um, and I just sat there and I was lonely and I, I cried and I, I sat there and felt sorry for myself and had pity for myself because I was so different and so alone and so broken and no one wants me around because I don't have a family, which I still did. Um, I don't have a husband. I'm less than. And looking back now, today was my first Christmas. Uh, waking up, going to bed, waking up completely alone in seven years. And the me now woke up this morning, got a phone call from a great friend, Merry Christmas, and he and I talked for a bit, and, and I get up, get ready, and go to meet my now-grown kids and grandkids. 
for breakfast. And there wasn't even the smallest part of me that was lonely or felt like, oh my God, poor pitiful me, I'm alone on Christmas morning. It was the most invigorating feeling, I guess, to just wake up and in my power and think, life is amazing. I have got the most beautiful family. I've got the most amazing friends. I have created this life on my own. I have built an empire on my own. I am the queen of this family. I don't need a counterpart. I want one, <laughs> but I don't need one. And I didn't feel lack at all. I, there was no lack. There is no lack today. There's, look at my amazing life that I have rebuilt. I started literally from the ground up, losing everything overnight. Uh, backstory, and I'll explain more of this. I woke up one morning after my divorce, and there's so much in between, uh, you know, there may be some judgment by some of what I say, but there's just so much that's in between that I will get to later. But I woke up, I had lost my house that I raised my children in or was raising my children in. I had lost a lot of friends because of a divorce. Obviously lost a husband. My kids had chosen to go live with their father. And I was laid off of work. All of this in a matter of two weeks. Um, maybe not even two weeks, maybe a week. Like, it felt like literally overnight. I felt like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz trying to get back home. And just lost. I don't, I don't know what's going on. It was like the twilight zone. And I remember waking up one morning and, you know, in my self wallow completely alone and thinking, this is rock bottom. This is what rock bottom feels like. I have literally hit rock bottom because I tried to better myself and my son's life and get out of a bad situation. This is what this feels like. And it was the most terrifying, lost feeling that I've ever felt in my life, hands down, hands down, the worst feeling I've ever felt. And I, I searched for a bottle of pills to try to end it. And there's some sort of other spirituality out there, I, I don't think there's just one. I think everyone has their own idea. Um, I don't judge on that, but in my eyes, there's something more out there because I couldn't find the bottle of pills. And to me, it was just that clean slate before I got to paint the most amazing picture ever. And that's today. That's learning self-love. That's learning how to sit with the lonely. That's building an empire by going after the career that I want, by, by going after the hobbies that I enjoy. I started the podcast and I absolutely love sitting behind that microphone. I have dove into healing and, and recovering from codependency and being so lonely that I, I went from, I, during the day would be the class clown at work to where I made everyone laugh. And that was all that fulfilled my heart to going home to taking a bubble bath and just sobbing because I was so alone. And I dated and I dated and dated all the wrong ones to try to fill a void. Didn't realize that at the time. I was searching for a counterpart. I didn't know what I wanted. I used to tell them. I don't want marriage. So fast forward to now uh, and today. For those of you that are going through this, keep your chin up, have hope. 
I promise you, you, you keep going and you dive into who you really are and you will realize that this is the most wonderful experience and you get a second chance to discover you or third or whatever. Um, I have a colorful life. I always have. And, and I truly believe that I'm a box of crayons. <laughs> and I said this to my best friend last night. She said, you've always had the most colorful life. And I said, honey, I'm a box of crayons. And I know it. And with those crayons, whether they be broken or, you know, bitten by children or whatever, I lost half of them. I have painted the most amazing life for myself and for my children. And a great example of surviving, perseverance, determination, and resilience. But it didn't come easily. And I want to share that with everyone out there who's going through what I have been through. Um, it isn't an easy journey, but it doesn't have to take as long as it took me. And I... I want to share what life is like post-divorce and what it's like to find yourself and how to get there and just how truly amazing it can be. I am no ordinary or am ordinary, I should say. I am nothing that's special. It's funny, on a Facebook group one time, I had a man completely just tear me apart because I have a podcast. I did coach for a while, um, break up and divorce. And I also started writing a book and I had posted about it. And he said, what makes you think that you're poop don't stink? I don't, I don't. I feel like I have screwed up more than anybody else. I am the poster child of how not to handle divorce and dating and breakups and Self-love, like, I have gone completely about this all wrong. And now that I have finally found my footing and I finally discovered who I am, what I want, and all of that, I, I want to share and I want to help people do it quicker. Because there's no better feeling when you, than when you feel like, okay, I've got this. This is the worst nightmare of my life. Because I don't care who you are, like I was saying, whether you absolutely need to get divorced or not. It is not easy and it isn't fun. And it's, it's, some of them, some of our marriages weren't that bad. Some of them were. So on top of getting divorced, you've now got scars or open wounds still maybe, right? And now you've got to heal not only figure out who you are, but you've got to heal the damage that's been done, not only from divorce, but from the marriage that went on. So I didn't, I didn't realize this. Uh, I didn't see it. And my best friend kept telling me, you just don't understand how great you are. She used to always tell me that. You you don't understand your beauty. You don't understand how strong you are. You don't see who you don't see what I see. And I really didn't. And I I used to look at her and just I looked at her in envy. Um why can't I be that independent and strong and and love myself as much as she does. And she's never been married, so she's never been through divorce. So in her eyes, she was looking at me like, damn, that girl, she's one tough cookie. And I didn't see it. And I didn't see it because I didn't understand the hurricane that I had just been through. Which by the way, any of you that have gone through divorce, that's exactly how I describe it. It is like this Major hurricane just came and disrupted your whole foundation, your whole life, your vision of where the future was going, where your children's future was going. You now feel like you've screwed up everyone's life, like your children's, your own, when and you really haven't, but that's how it feels. And, and you have to try to rebuild, but you don't know how. It's such a new feeling. This isn't us getting married in our early 20s. I was 19. 
I was just a baby and and just built a life with someone. This is recreating a whole new life in a whole new world that I had never been in. So I I want to share my healing and divorce and single journey with all of you. Um, it may not be that interesting to some, but I hope it helps some of you. And I'm going to get pretty vulnerable. It's going to be pretty raw. Um, anywhere from self-love, healing, to being told that you have the possibility of having cancer. Scary word. Um, to going to doctor's appointments alone, to waking up on holidays alone, to missing your children so terribly, to having your children not think that highly of you um, due to, you know, just divorce talk. Um, I want to share all of it. And there will be some tears. There will be some sharing of some stuff that not a lot of people know. Uh, and I want to take those of you going through this or have gone through this on this journey of healing with me and self-discovery because I am not done. Um, I have made leaps and bounds. <laughs> I have been over hurdles I never thought I could make it over. I, I'm so proud of myself. But it's never over. Like the self-love, the healing, the healing, holy crap. The healing that I have done and the things that I have discovered, my habits, the reason I have these habits, the reason that I have been attracted to the men I've been attracted to, the reason I have felt the way I felt, my the reason for me being so codependent, for me being so insecure, I have dug down deep to figure all this out. And I, I will definitely share with all of you how I've done that. Um, so welcome to my journey. Come take a walk with me. And hopefully you all had a very Merry Christmas because today is the day that I am starting after this wonderful day of self-discovery of, holy cow, you actually made it. You made it and you continue to grow and learn. And why not share that with the world and show you all and talk to you all? Um, be vulnerable and let you know it's okay. It's going to be okay, and this is how I've done it. I don't think there's a right or wrong way, but I know I sure took the hardest route. That's me. There are turns and <laughs> corners and roundabouts that I keep going in circles, and that's this girl. And I will say, well, I did it the hard way. I did it the way that taught me lessons and it's probably the only way I would have learned, right? And appreciate who I am today and the life that I have. So again, welcome to my journey. Get in, sit down, hold on tight, because here we go.